Before we jump in, a warning that we are an explicit book podcast. Yes, that means swearing, shitty jokes, and a whole lot of dark humour that some may take offence to. Please check your trigger warnings on all of the books we cover. You've been warned. The episode starts in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> a book and a bear. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A Book and a Bev. We are your not only your favorite podcast, but we're your favorite podcast hosts. It is a big call, and I'm leaning into it. We're proceeding with confidence. Fair enough. So that's right. You've got Bryony, Georgia, Ellie, and this week our mantra is save a horse and ride a cowboy as we dive into Heartless by Elsie Silver. Oh, that's good. This dual point of view book is giving us like so many tropes. We've got grumpy sunshine. We've got single dad. We've got pregnancy trope. And nanny. Yeehaw, indeed. Oh, my God. So strap into your chaps, slap me on the ass and call me a good girl. Let's dive in. What are we all drinking? Whoa, (laughs) feisty. I am on water tonight. I have had three coffees and a Red Bull and it's not even 8 p.m. So I'm going to do the kind thing to my heart and just take it down a notch, which is good. But I don't need anything with this book because it is that fucking good. I'm also drinking water because I am still on antibiotics and I don't want to fucking die on a Monday night. I love you guys. You're so responsible and I'm proud of you. (laughs) Me, on the other hand, I'm drinking something tall, dark and handsome in honour of Daddy Cade. Daddy. Jack and Coke. (laughs) I was going to be drinking Jack and Coke because Daddy Cade could slide down my throat just as nicely as one. Oh, (laughs) that's a lot. You know? Glug, glug 3000 indeed. (laughs) Please. On that charming note, how did we all feel about this immaculate book? (laughs) Well, Cade and Wheeler might just be my absolute favourite couple ever. Not only can they read each other like a book, but they approach every obstacle like a normal couple, which makes this book so much more relatable. I loved who Willa was as a person. I think I might also like Loki be like super gaily in love with her. It's fine, tee haha, because she has a very take no shit kind of attitude, which is everything that I want to be in life and that I want to love in life. Absolutely. Cade was the ideal grumpy cowboy with an absolute filthy mouth that makes you fucking clench. They can joke about him having a breeding kink all they fucking want, but damn, a girl can fucking dream. Yeah. In and around me, please. <laughs> Up in. <laughs> yeah, it's an absolute knockout by Elsie Silver, and I literally cannot wait to continue reading the rest of the series with you guys because it's just such a good series. Oh, I read the rest of the books just for snippets of Willer and Cade. <laughs> I completely agree. I had very high hopes for this book after these gals forewarned me that I would lose my tiny brain reading it. And well, they were right. It was amazing. And I devoured it. Like I'm not normally like a one to two day kind of reading gal. I got a lot going on. I ignored all of my responsibilities <laughs> in order to read this book. It was grumpy sunshine done in a more realistic way. You got mm-hmm. it spot on Georgia, because I think that's what shits me the most when like conflict doesn't get resolved in the proper way and this did it was good Mm. the way elsie just nails writing about parenting and relationships it's just phenomenal cade's in a dialogue and monologue about his relationship with luke and the love he has for luke i was like oh my god yes (laughs) you've like written my thoughts on a page minus the dead mother and the Mm. traumatic childhood like it's just spot on (laughs) the spice was out of this world good so much tension so much dirty talk can you even call it dirty talk when it is that fucking filthy (laughs) yeah I I felt wrong reading that in a work (laughs) environment. Their banter was just epic. Kate's relationship with Luke and then him watching Willa's relationship with like, oh my God, absolute death. Dead. And I did somewhat call the pregnancy trope earlier on. I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but I left them a little voice memo being like, I love this book so much. I'd even be okay with a baby. And (laughs) here we are. Kate is my ultimate book boyfriend. He is daddy. And that is all. Screaming. What does Elsie put in these books? Because I'm lapping this shit up. Like, your girl has buckle bunny trauma from high school, and yet here we are. We're healing, we're grown, we're groaning, and it's too good. We're groaning. Oh. You're groaning? Gosh. Groaning and moaning. Mm-hmm. Although I simply cannot believe that women enjoy blowjobs as much as these girls do, I can appreciate wanting to bring a dark and brooding love interest to their knees. Absolutely. To start off yes. with, Willa. Fuck. 
She is mouthy, bratty, sassy, and an absolute smoke show. I love her more than life. I could be easily influenced into nipple piercings because of her. I want to be her <laughs> and I want to be with her. It's Delilah Green all over again. <laughs> yeah. Paid like screaming, crying, throwing up. He is so hot and so brooding and so tormented and broken and I love it. And then he opens his mouth and I want to combust. It's so fucking hot. <laughs> this book had me in hysterics for, and like I was cackling from the banter. I was crossing my thighs for the spice and I did not even hate the pregnancies trope, like still a little bit, but the way that these characters <laughs> dealt with it was so beautiful and I adored like every single part of this book. I will say I wish we described asses not as globes, but that's neither here nor there. Oh my God, they did do that. <laughs> Wow. The globe of her ass. <laughs> I skimmed right past that. I just went, no. Nope. <laughs> Where is the peanut in the JJ? Or fucking the filth out the mouth, either way. <gasps> so. Yeah, honestly, I'm easy to please. <laughs> yeah, especially with Kay, poor Willa. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, let's dive in. So, reminder we had like who we're kind of dealing with in this book. So, we've got Willa Grant, our sassy FMC. She is a fiery redhead with the skills to bring grown men to their knees. Amazing. I love her. We have Kate Eaton dark and broody single dad oldest brother with unresolved trauma to boot they'd say less he's the grumpy now grumpy sunshine so just mwah, beautiful we've got luke eaton who is our sweet summer angel and our collective son and then we've got <laughs> summer obviously we her book one she's our female bestie smart sister-in-law we've got the eatons you know harvey again how badly do we want to fuck our grandpa rhett's retired he's living his best life Bo, still being a loudmouthed military middle child. Jasper, still brooding and quiet. Again, love him. And, mm -hmm. you know, Violet, accomplished baby sister. It's fine. We've got the whole gang. Love. Here we are. Kate Eden, let's go. He can be eating me out any day of the week. <laughs> so, to start the book off, it's Kate's point of view, and he needs a babysitter for Luke for the summer. Speaking of summer, his sister-in-law, Summer, and his dad, Harvey, are trying to help him find one, but, like, nothing's working out, as all the babysitters just want to fuck him. And, I mean, I can't blame them. Look at him. Is a black t-shirt honestly the way i would rock up to that interview was mary fucking poppins and then like <laughs> night one i'm stripping off the trench coat and being like <laughs> Well, <laughs> Cade is tall, dark and handsome, but also a dick. He is a man of little words and even less patience for fuckery, which is making it impossible to find a babysitter until like Summer just casually mentions that she might know someone who is used to handling rowdy boys. <laughs> Cade is getting coffee in town when he's distracted by an absolute bombshell redhead. And I mean, fair, we all are and it's completely normal. We get one of my all time favorite meetings in a book. As this redhead goes to place her like fancy coffee order, something drops out of her bag and Cade picks it up for her and then realises it's her panties. <laughs> <laughs> and when Cade says, you dropped your panties, ma'am, I die. My panties also dropped at the same time. <laughs> yeah, Our collective panty drop. Mm -hmm. Kate ends up keeping her panties after she basically runs away while laughing. Enter Willa Grant to the story. She is telling Summer about the whole panty situation along with how her life is all up in the air right now when Summer offers her a gig for the summer. Willa is nothing if not a go with the flow gal, so she's in and I can't relate to that. I need a strict schedule. I need to be booked in advance. I am not spontaneous. However, if she was like, yo, there's this cowboy who needs his son, like looked up. After, you'd be like a nanny and he's a hot as shit. I'd be like, hey, I'll leave my whole life behind. Mortgage? <laughs> house? Who is she? A partner? Dog? <laughs> I'm gone. Mortgage? Don't know her. Sign me up. You both don't like children, so that's yeah. an issue. No, it's absolutely okay. I would like children if it involved like a hunky cow. Funky. Yeah, I feel like the pros could outweigh yeah. the cons, but we'll get there. Little does Willa know that it's Kate until they're like face to face. She's like, oh my God, it's the panty guy. <laughs> and Willa and Summer's friendship is the absolute best. So else, like Kate is trying to be like, I'm not the panty guy. Summer's just pissing herself on the floor. Like she's <laughs> in hysterics. Kate is trying to like be like, no, absolutely not. This panty gal cannot be my babysitter. But Summer is like, just like, you know, give peace a chance. We learn about Kate's traumatic backstory of not only stepping in to help like look after the entire family at the age of eight, but also Luke's mum like absolutely destroying Kate's sense of self and trust. And all he has is his family, the ranch and Luke. And it's just, oh, he's so broken. I love it. Kate listens in on Luke and Willa playing out outside at Rhett and Summer's house and they already seem to be like vibing and Kate can't fight it because she's just too 
good. Willa gives zero fucks about Cade's imposing vibes and the band is like already sizzling from like day dot. As Willa goes to leave to get ready to begin work, Cade tells her to wear underwear to work the next day. Mm. Rather than being offended or embarrassed, Willa just winks at him and says she'll be ready for inspection bright and early, boss. <gasps> Amazing. <laughs> Just yeah. I love it. Cade expects her to be like flaky, but she isn't. She's early and already poking Cade, and I love it. I think we get this quote from Cade's point of view that it just it sent me. I was already like, fantastic. This book is perfection. Quote is it seems like the universe could have granted some sort of reprieve, but it granted me Willa fucking grant. <laughs> <laughs> love that energy. That's what we want in the world. I want a man to be like questioning his entire life. Yes. When Cade is rude to Willa, like she easily asserts her boundaries which I love and says that although she appreciates like it's hard to let go she's not willing to be his punching bag Kate is like that's actually a fair point and I do respect that Willa takes every opportunity to rattle this poor duck breeding man and we expect nothing less from a feminist icon I love the way that she speaks to Luke like she talks to him like a normal person she doesn't hesitate to maintain her boundaries while also educating him and it's brilliant after Luke is in bed we discover that Kate likes to um, have an evening in the hot tub on the deck oh hi <laughs> hi weirdly enough i only go in the hot tub naked <laughs> so silly <laughs> slipped and fell on your dick so, oh, so they silly. banter and when several like conflict issues come up like the fact that willa is a bartender and not a child care worker and summer kind of just you know didn't disclose that they actually figure out a way to discuss things like despite all the eye fucking and i love it as time passes willa continues to test kate's will to live by helping him with the cooking and cleaning which is not part of her job role and like Luke and her are also as thick as thieves everything is just cute as shit Mm -hmm. it helps that he sounds like a really cute kid yeah they're at a family dinner with all of the Edens when Willa officially meets everyone and even goes so far as to stop Harvey from saying boys will be boys again feminist icon but that makes Cade laugh which is shocking oh my god he can laugh I love this moment in a grumpy sunshine just mm, it's so good (laughs) we then get one of my favorite parts of the whole book where Harvey is describing using a leaf blower on his lawn and says that he gave the yard a good blowjob and everyone is trying not to crack up and Cade literally has to leave the table. Willa follows him out. He's like in hysterics on the porch and seeing him laugh and smile so freely does something to our collective vaginas. Clench again. The clenching. But he's so traumatized and grumpy <laughs> that he can't even laugh in front of people. He has to excuse he himself. Oh my gosh, yes. This moment basically unlocks a part of Cade where he loves how happy Willa looks, like especially when he makes her happy. And this leads to Cade and Willa agreeing to go to the pub with the whole gang. Cade is admitting that Willa is growing on him when a childhood friend, Lance, appears and tries to convince Cade to like do some competitive cattle wrangling with him Lance sees Willa and it's enough to like set Kate off and he just is like we're dancing actually sorry we're busy without even thinking about it he has no idea what he's done he's like how did we get here (laughs) (laughs) we get this moment where Willa makes a blowjob joke and Kate flips up and shows us the first glimpse of his dirty fucking mouth Jesus (laughs) and Kate said the joke's on you though I wouldn't last 10 minutes and just because you'd be quiet doesn't mean I would be Oh my fucking chick. Oh, she blew oh, away. The it's women were silent. <laughs> like, it's not even just, I haven't even touched on the fact that he calls her red. Oh, I know. And that on its I own. Know. On its own, that's enough. And Willing he... to dye my hair for that. <laughs> yeah. Before Cade can even recover, someone cuts in and he then has to watch like four guys dance with Willow while he just slowly like freaks the fuck out. And when he decides to leave for the night, Willow goes with him. On the drive home, they swing past Harvey's and find like Harvey and Luke will cuddled up on the couch and oh. Willa helps clean up without being asked to and then says that Cade is a good dad and the words of praise are enough to erode a little bit more of Cade's boundaries which we love just erode a little bit more of his like self what is it doubt insecurity doubt no foreskin. no no, <laughs> just... no. why are we eroding his foreskin <laughs> erode more of him down his willpower down his willpower. Willpower. willpower so next chapter we get we are back in the hot tub and Cade can't see Willa's nipple piercing Hello. Obviously, the next thing to happen is that they start playing Truth or Dare. 
During one of Willa's questions, Kate gives us the full rundown on Luke's cunty mick cunt face of a mother, aka Talia, who got pregante and then cheated on Kate and then left Luke behind when she yeeted. Wowzers. Mother of the year. Wow. Look, I have no words for how much I despise this type of ex because not only did she cheat and leave and abandon her kid, she keeps on popping the fuck back up. The exes cannot exist after. They relocate to another country. Luke is the immaculate conception. He has yeah, a mother. Yeah, he's Jesus. He's Jesus. But, but instead Jesus. of Mary. But it's just Cade. Okay. It's just Cade was pregnant. Carried it as well. <laughs> yeah. It's like a male seahorse. You do. <laughs> but instead of carrying it in like a womb, you carry it inside the, the scrotum, the ball sack. Oh, and then you could give it tickles just occasionally. Just <laughs> yeah. <to> <laughs> oh. <laughs> like something about discussing the past and drinking bourbon together that makes Cade a little naughty. And so he dares Willa to sit on the edge of the tub, nipple piercings to the wind. Oh. They like like toe the line of this game becoming something more. There's this whole moment where she's describing her bikini bottoms are wedged between her pussy lips. Oh dear God, <laughs> not the pizza sandwich. <laughs> Why is it a pizza? Just imagine two pieces of pizza <laughs> smushed together. Oh. It's a pizza sandwich. <laughs> and there's the innards. But you've got to imagine like ham and stuff. <laughs> ham. Oh. It could just be a ham sandwich. It could, really. <laughs> <laughs> we don't question when words just come out. No, we just, why, we haven't no, like, done yeah. it yet. Why would <laughs> we start now? No. Willa's dare to Cade is to do the whole rodeo thing with Lance and let her take care of Luke so that he can do something for himself. Oh my god. And like that's really surprising us all by not taking it further. And I'm kind of I'm kind of angry at you, Willa. Take it further. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kind of angry. As a parent, someone saying, You really want to do that, don't you? Here, let me take the child and then you go and prosper. Oh my god, that is better than sex. <laughs> and I do agree when he says <laughs> later, he's like, I'm glad we didn't fuck them because I know you better now and our bond is better now. And I do agree <laughs> with that, but also I'm just very yes. horny for Man. Oh my god. If there was the female version of Blue Balls, we all have it after this scene. Yes. Oh yeah. And it's because it's also like one of the first times that they both know that the other wants them. And Kate's just trying to keep himself together, but it's not fucking working. And we get this quote, she'd make a priest crumble and I'm no man of the cloth. Yes. How D inside my <laughs> partner. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we then have like a cute but tension-filled morning coffee encounter, which leads to Willa schooling Kate on the hypocrisy of male nipple visibility. Again, feminist icon and I would die for her. Kate and obviously Luke are starting to miss Willa when she isn't around. We have this moment where Kate is cooking dinner and Willa is like, oh my God, pulls out an acoustic guitar and is like, do you guys know Wonderwall? <laughs> do you mind if Classic. I play a guitar at you for four and a half minutes? Kate nearly loses all of my favourite when he wants to turn off watermelon sugar from the radio because that's what they're vibing to. But then she starts singing like a sexy version of watermelon sugar, which, I mean, it's Harry oh. Styles. It's already at a certain level of sexy. And then you've got a redhead woman in your kitchen. With nipple piercings. With nipple piercings. And it's mm-hmm. just like, oh, my God. Apparently it's good. And it's not like when Selena was singing her funeral dirge in Crowd of Midnight and we were all laughing at her. Tee-hee. Yeah. I didn't get those vibes at all. Or like, <laughs> whoever the fuck her name was when they were all sitting around like the circle. Yes, sure like, Hi. Nes- Nesrin. I auditioned for Australian Idol one time. Let me show you my audition song. It's Feyre's painting all over again. It is. Honestly, we're so happy for Willa in this moment that she is actually good and Kate is like, fuck me, Dad, this is so hot. As Kate watches Willa and Luke like dance later on, he's smiling so hard, his face hurts. And then, like, Willa and Kate end up slow dancing and the vibes are, in fact, vibing. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. <laughs> but so also good. realistic, other than the yes. acoustic guitar singing. <laughs> that moment happens in my household quite often where we all just start dancing with the kids and then we end up dancing together and then we have, like, group hugs. It's, oh. like, just random and it's, like, the most beautiful little thing. And then I get my acoustic oh. guitar out and I'm like, children, sit. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy is going to play you a song. They're all like, no, please no. don't. Like, sit <laughs> You will watch and you will listen and you will clap. So, Willa is sure to get up after she hears Cade leave. She just doesn't want to scandalise him by her nipples. This morning she walks into the kitchen and she finds he has made her some coffee. Because, remember, he hasn't realised that she's been getting up early all these mornings. So he doesn't make her coffee, which is shame on you. But yeah. now he is. And he leaves her a note which says, Red, the coffee is for you. Starting some two-year-olds today. If you feel like getting your back broken, mm-hmm. meet me at the barn and you can sit on one. <laughs> I'm dying. Sweet baby Jesus. Willa immediately is like, yes, break 
Greg Matt back. She <laughs> gathers the child and she heads out to see Daddy Cowboy, who somehow looks even hotter on a horse. Like, I don't know the, the mathematics it's, of that. Because he's always like dark and bleak. He's always in like a dark t shirt or something, but he's got like a black cowboy hat, like black chaps. Like everything is black leather. And I'm just like, yes. Hi. <laughs> so all of the cowboys in the field yard arena section fall in love with Willa on sight, essentially. She likes the look of one of the horses, though, and this one's particularly feisty, and she just bucked a cowboy off, and she's like, yes, I shall sit on that one. And Caden's being a protective daddy, and he's like, nope. And then we get our horse girl moment. So I'm she's here. like, here we go. Strap me in. I'm going to do this, because she rides like fancy like international horses that are very lovely, and she's like, I can do this. I'm a horse gal, and it's all fine. Like Cade just says to her, woman. And how does that one word do me in? Right? Like anyone else being like, woman, I'd be like, fuck you and let Mm -mm. me read you the rights. But him, I'm like, no. We can knees. Mm -hmm. Their relationship is Beth Dutton and Rip from Yellowstone. It is. mm -hmm. Yes. Perfection. Luke is swearing. And then Cade blames it on Willa, to which she says, I'm pretty sure out of the two of us, you're the one with the filthy mouth, Cade. And then he says, you have no fucking idea, Red. (gasps) Gasp. Cowboy gasp. Cowboy (laughs) gasp in cowboy. (laughs) But this next moment just solidifies Willa as one of my favorite ever characters. She has taken Luke to a kid's birthday party. It is beautiful. It's so cute. Quick side note here. Cade's internal monologue is about how he just can't do like the kid playground interaction with adults thing. And I couldn't agree with him more. It's like hell warmed up when I have to walk into a playground and make small talk with other parents. It's hell not warmed fun. up. Hell warmed up. It's fucked. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. I just want to <laughs> fucking hate you. <laughs> I've got podcasts in my ears. I've got my friends who I don't actually know talking to me in my ears. I'd rather listen. I agree, Cade. I concur. But Cade has gotten to this birthday party late and immediately he's witnessing a scene. So here we have Willa comforting an inconsolable Luke. It turns out that the birthday boy pushed Luke into the water and then held him under and Willa had to like jump in and grab him out. That yeah, little... we're going to fuck up this child. Mm, that we are. Willa immediately like turns into this protective mama lion and finds the brat and starts setting him straight. And then the child's mother arrives and she's like, um, do not speak to my precious little angel. And Willa's like, your piece of shit child just pushed Mm. my kid, so sit the fuck down. Not getting through to this dipshit mother, Willa then pushes the kid (laughs) into the pool. And this is what my dreams are made of. Cade has now decided it's time to step in after he witnesses his nanny drown a kid. But (laughs) he completely forgets the mother's name. He's like, it starts with a B, bunny. It's fucking brilliant though. Luke and Willa leave and Cade notices how Willa has like quickly become Luke's biggest comfort, which is adorable. And my heart breaks when I think that he's going to have to watch her leave, which we all know that's not going to happen because of plot, but that's fine. Like in the moment, it's sad. Yep, yep. But then Bunny starts ranting about Willa. Oh, fuck you, Bunny. Fuck you, Rabbit Bunny. Rabbit season. <laughs> Kate then says, I like to think I'm a gentleman, but I'm only going to tell you once. Keep her name out of your mouth if you're going to use that tone. I love it. Yes. It's kind of like Will Smith, but less aggressive, and I'm here for it. <laughs> As if it can't get any better, he thinks Willow is a psycho, but she's his psycho. Hmm. Oh, my God. Be still my beating heart. That's all of us because we all would have <laughs> fucking drowned that child. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah mm. pro-choice for a reason. Anyway, Luke and Willa are uh, back home playing hide-and-seek around the hay bales, which my allergies could never, like, imagine the itch and the sneeze. Oh. Out. Cade finds Luke first, and he's almost overcome with emotions, thinking about Luke being pushed into the water, and, like, he just needs to feel him and I have never resonated with anything more like the amount of times I have these overwhelming emotions about my kids and I just need to like cuddle the actual shit out of them otherwise I'll die but anyway we don't have time to get sentimental because we have semen to spill oh gosh semen didn't realize we were on a boat that we are (laughs) below deck so he catches up to her and she immediately word vomits her apologies for pushing the kid and getting kicked out of the party but then she gets sidetracked by his backwards hat She's like, oh, this has done things to me. I must leave immediately. And, like, she just goes to run away. But Cade's like, not today, Satan. And he grabs her. And then they make out. And oh. there's dry humping and there's panting. And then Cade is fantasizing about doing more. And, well, that's just too much for the poor guy as he jizzed in his pants. You know, jizzed like that in my in pants. In my pants. <laughs> Oh my God, bless. He's had such a dry streak that he's just oh. like the mere touch of some groin to groin grinding. It's too much. 
Oh, mm. yeah. It wouldn't help that Willa is like, do me right now. Do me right yeah. now in these hate yeah. I don't care that your son is like a meter away. <laughs> I know. My whole thought, I'm like, he's going to find you. But he he's a bit of a dick in this moment. And he tells Willa that he shouldn't have done that. And then he just leaves her while he goes to clean up the situation it's, with his parents. It's another Rowan Whitethorn situation where he, even oh, though he wants it, he, he's like, no. Don't touch me like that. <gasps> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Right. Just... You're still traumatizing us to this day. Like every great communicator, Cade goes silent after the Jizz incident and Willa thinks that he hates her, which is fair enough. And it's like, sir, we understand that was an embarrassing situation, but you need to go watch the music video because it will make you feel so much better about yourself. It's a normal thing that happened. Yeah. Mm. Willa seeks some advice from Summer and Summer is like, if that man even talks to you, he likes you. Calm down. <laughs> but then gastro hits and we get probably a few too many pages on how Willa deals with the situation. Like I didn't need as much detail as to the vomit situation. Yeah, the strawberry being on her that mm. he's but more Mm. I don't do spew. Not even my own children. The spewy child runs over to me and I'm like, I'm not your mother. <laughs> don't know who she is. Not your mother. <laughs> nope. Willa is handling things like a champ though. She snuggles him up in Kate's bed and lays down with him and checks his temperature and, and then Kate gets home and he sees her and he just like turns into the human version of the heart eye emoji. He's like, oh my God, this woman is caretaking my sick child and she's in my bed and she has pierced nipples. Oh my God. He's such a gentleman. So he just goes to sleep in her bed instead. Rude. But the next day, Gastro strikes down Willa and here we see Cade in all of his glory. He ties her hair back. He gives her his shirt and then he carries her to his bed again. Oh my god. No. But the best part is as he's comforting her, he says, that's my girl. Dead. Stop it. I mentally Dead. just checked out for a moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then they have a deep and meaningful in his bed and Willa propositions him even though she's like still a little bit spewy but it's fine. Look, yes. I love her confidence again. Like she's a bit spewy. She's got gastro and she's like, my time to shine. My punani is not affected I, by this. <laughs> I can actually just go on all fours. You can go from the back. You don't even know, need to be near this. <laughs> no. Yeah. Put a bag on my head. Call it an egg. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Mm. He decides to be responsible and knows that she's leaving soon and he just doesn't want to open himself up to the heartbreak or her or Luke and we hate him. My blue balls hate him. They do. They do. They need a scrote jiggle and a half. (laughs) She asks him to stay and he does, which is like, okay, you've redeemed yourself a little bit, Kate. Here we go. They unpack his traumatic childhood and how he had to grow up from like an eight-year-old. Tiny, tiny human with a lot of responsibility. Whereas Willa has always been the wild, unruly one in her family, like, literal opposites of each other which is why they're so meant to be together and so fucking perfect willa imagines a future life where kate and her are married to separate people but in each other's lives because of brett and summer but even imagining them with other people is not sitting well with kate oh willa takes this bonding opportunity to try and thank kate with a little sucky suck like like, three thousand rises up onto her knees and like willa your gag reflex has not yet recovered (laughs) this is not going to end well (laughs) no he gets all fussed and he's like oh yeah no so but yes but no, but sorry. And he just runs away. I really like the runaway method. He's a big fan of it and it's Mm -hmm. very cute and I find it quite funny. Yeah, he's a 38-year-old man, but he's like, no, can't speak. The next day they head out to the rodeo and Kate can't keep his eyes off her. She's got skin-tight jeans on and is wearing the snakeskin boots from summer, the sisterhood of the travelling snakeskin boots, (laughs) because those boots will get you laid every goddamn time. (laughs) That they will. Mm -hmm. Magical, majestic things. Willa and Luke then meet up with Rhett and Uncle Jasper Cullen and there's just much banter. It doesn't help when Rhett asks Luke if Willa and his dad have been swapping massages and Luke is like, no, just beds. I fucking love children with no filter. (laughs) Brilliant. Willa threatens to braid Rhett's hair, cut it off and wear it like a necklace for mocking her. And I am in love with this woman. Like her Mm -hmm. quick skills at just responding are just phenomenal. She is quite literally getting wet at watching Capable K do things with horses whilst wearing tight pants. But now we're going to flash back to book one because no communication equals I'm going to hang out with other guys. And Kate is not happy. Jen, Luke is having a sleepover with granddaddy and Kate is literally pacing, waiting for Willa to get home. But she's not happy that he is controlling her whilst not wanting to be with her. When she returns, he erupts with, I think I can't get you out of my head no matter how hard I try. I think you're too damn tempting and that I'm too damn complicated. I think you smell like him and I can't fucking stand that. A girl, she's not having any of it though and she she tells him to fuck himself as she walks back to the house and then he grabs her by the arm and pulls her to him and he says, keep talking like that and I'm going to fuck the filth right out of your pretty mouth. 
<laughs> oh, the woman was indeed too stunned to fucking speak. Three of us, if we were to be told that, blubbering mess. Like jaws no. on the floor, panty on the floor. We've just laid back. We've starfished. We've starfished Face on the floor. That ass up. <laughs> Unable to function after hearing those words. But Willa, do you know what she does? She holds his gaze, drops to her knees. And then a power struggle ensues because you think that she has the power being like her face is near his dick, right? But then he shoves his fingers in her mouth and tells her to suck and prove to me you're good enough for the job. Oh, Uh, my goody goodness. My dear dear sir. JC, turn around and don't look down. I'm going to pass out. (laughs) Everything is so good. She gives his fingers a blowjob before he unbuckles his pants and, like, lets his massive cock, okay, let me repeat that, massive cock flop out. (laughs) He just, hello. Willa's eyes. Wax her on the head. Knocks her out. (laughs) Turkey slap. (laughs) Wham, bam, thank you, (laughs) ma'am. I'm in charge. Smack. <laughs> it turns out the sucking of the fingers is all they needed. Her eyes shimmer in anticipation like Christmas morning, which is a little much, if you're going to ask me. Don't think any of us have looked at a dick and been like, mm. Yes. Get it in yes. that cob. Reminds Not me of a Christmas. single one. Mm. Yes. But anyway, she gets to work and she loves giving blowjobs, which is very unique, but good for her and good for Cade, I guess. Just I'm happy for them. She's giving like mm. the glug glug 3000 of her life and they're both having a great time and i just i don't believe it but that's no. fine no <laughs> most no. unrealistic part of the whole book yeah he jizzes in her mouth but then apologizes and tells her he promised himself he wouldn't cross the line with her but before he can finish again willa just bails thinking he's about to tell her that he can't do anything with her which oh my god could you imagine like you just gave this man the gobby of your life you've got carpet burn on your knees or like patio well, they're burn on, the deck. on your knees oh my god she's like, got splinters splinters the splinters Wood imprints in her her knees just out um, there nipples in the wind and he, he's just like yeah thanks for that but now nah, I'm, I'm just i'm good now thankfully Cade was not about to walk away and instead chases after her which swoon primal her. king mm-hmm. or but he tells her how much he longs for her and how he watches her with luke and it's crazy for her and he knows she has to leave soon cough cough but he'll take what he can with her then he says now get on your back i want to watch you squirm while i taste you for the first time oh dear jesus fuck me up sideways inside upside down maybe on the left specific (laughs) so the power struggle continues as Cade tells her the only appropriate response to his compliments is thank you gotta love that as he undresses her he compliments her and he makes her say thank you as they go he starts fiddling with her fanny and she moans his name (sighs) and then she's like god and he says he's not here right now baby it's just me and i'm done asking nicely i'm ready to take (sighs) oh he could take me death has befallen me (laughs) I no longer exist on this plane. No, rest in peace. This is how I go. This is how I go. I've never been happier. Pretty much. Break my fucking back. There is a a hell of a lot more dirty talk, which I just can't go into. Firstly, because it's simply too hot for me to put into words and you all know I get uncomfortable. But secondly, Mm -hmm. you just need to read the damn thing for yourselves because if you want the full experience, and trust me, you want the full experience, you're going to have to read it because I'm not doing it justice. Just know there is cunnilingus and then he fucks her with no condom but it's fine guys because she's on the pill <laughs> Tee says everyone ever <laughs> she does have the best orgasm of her life and none of us are surprised given the man in her bed absolutely like, well, technically she's in his bed but still well, technically like, just... he's in hers because he's inside her inner bed if you know what i mean yeah. oh god there go. there's a lot of you were made for me and just for you moments going on. It's beautiful. They have a finale of coitus with semen entering the for JJ and Cade says thank you when they're all done. You're motherfucking welcome. So Daddy Cade wakes up hot, hard and smiling next to our girl Willa. They had so much sex. He also made her pancakes the next day and he is literally our favourite grumpy cowboy ever to exist. I want that on stop. a fucking shirt. Like, you know, you yeah. get live, laugh, love. I want hot, hard and smiling. Hot, hard and pancakes. Pancakes. Oh, yes. He fucks you, <laughs> gives you the best orgasm of your life, and then makes mm-hmm. you pancakes the next day. Oh, hello. Yes. With a fucking smile. Mm. 
<laughs> Hi. Willa is kind of freaking out, but Kate isn't. Kate is so very sure of Willa. We get this quote. No, Willa, I like you. I care about you. I didn't go without sex for years just to start it up again randomly. I had opportunities, but I turned them down because I just wasn't interested. We don't need to make a show of it. And with Luke around, we probably shouldn't, but I'm interested in you. I don't know where that leaves us or what it all means. All I know is that it's going to absolutely wreck me when you leave at the end of the summer, but I'm far too gone to care. Oh, this man, this <laughs> man. The gas. This man. He is stop it. Becoming in touch with his emotions. It's doing oh, we love that. that. Willa is going to teach Luke how to play guitar for his birthday, and Kate is worried because Talia is going to come out of the woodwork for Luke's birthday. Great. Yippee ki yay. Luke tells Willa that he wishes that she was his mum. And we oh. fucking die. But we need to yeet far away from the children because this next scene, Willa is in the hot tub again, and Kate <gasps> is watching her. She tells him that she's been thinking about last night, and he takes charge and oh. get her to play with herself oh, are you ready Christ. no <laughs> You should see yourself right now. All that pretty copper hair stuck to your shoulders. Tits out and heaving. Begging to be fucked. Flimsy bathing suit all bunched up. Proving how useless it is at hiding your body. That cock tease of a tight little cunt all out on display for me. Begging just like every other inch of your body. Stop fucking around and show me how pretty you look with your fingers shoved inside, baby. If I weren't already dead, I'd be more dead now. Yeah. And we all know I generally, as a rule, do not like baby as a pet name. Except for this man. This man. This man can say baby. This man could call me anything he wanted. And yeah. I can Play Justin Bieber, baby. On repeat. <laughs> Let's go. I'd be like, yes. So Cade makes a meal out of Willa. He gets in the hot tub in his clothes because he simply cannot wait. And we fucking love that. Cade ends up fucking Willa's tits. And we Ooh. all fucking die because he ends Ends up rubbing his cum all over her chest and her chin and her lips like a lovely Picasso painting. Fair. And she says, how do I look? And he says, like you're mine. Oh, well, slay. Uh, dripping slay. in your cum. Kind of not anyone yep. else's right now. But, slay. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. They're going to have to clean that hot tub. Yeah, that hot tub is absolutely fucked. There's no redeeming Jesus. it. Just going to have to donate it, get a new one. Don't, Don't donate, donate it. it. Burn it. <laughs> Don't burn it. <laughs> Don't do that. So at at Luke's birthday party, Willa and Talia end up having a little standoff, but Cade realizes that he is like 100% for Willa. In Willa's POV, she's super fucking jealous. Talia tries to talk to her, but Willa's not fucking having it. And we end up learning that Talia actually purposely didn't take her birth control so that she could just fucking hook our man in. And she says that no matter what, she will always be the mother of Cade's child. And yes. therefore, Willa, Willa should not <laughs> make the most of it while she can and Willa oh, is like this would be offensive but also fuck you and your cow so she says I'm not in hell yet lady don't need to spend my time hanging out with the devil and then she just oh turns around and walks away Willa. snaps for Willa snaps for Willa but can we just remember that Talia literally said I want the kid or I want the dog when she left. Yeah. Yeah, she took the dog. I and mean, I mean, I know we've made a lot of jokes that would make you think that we might make that same call. If I was a mother of human child, I'd obviously choose my own child. So Willa goes inside and Kate is there. Willa tells him about what Talia said to her about the entrapment scandal. And Kate is basically just laughing because he already knows. Willa is spiraling though. She's searching through all like the kitchen drawers and she finds her black panties, like the original ones that she dropped on the floor of the cafe when they first met and he told her that he threw them out and she ends up asking why he kept them all this time and we get this moment because you've never been just the nanny Willa you've always been more the woman I wanted but I wouldn't let myself have I'm not mad about whatever Talia told you because I don't give a fuck about her and her antics I have Luke wouldn't trade him for the world how that came about doesn't even matter anymore because I truly just do not care do you know what I care about though you Willa I care about you you have nothing, and I mean nothing, to be jealous of. Thank you for the reassurance, Daddy. <laughs> Bless. After that, Willa continues to try to talk back and Kate ends up shoving her black panties into her mouth to shut her up and I fucking die. Oh my god. He gets her to bend over the countertop inside while there is a child's birthday <laughs> going on outside and she has had no underwear on all fucking day. <laughs> I have deep She's problem. been nudie rudy. Nothing. Mm -mm -mm. What if a child no. ran between her <laughs> legs? He would have been like, oh my god, I was just up there like a few years ago. 
It's home. It's home. So we continue on our journey and Cade is still the best grumpy dirty talker to ever be written into fictional works. Here we yes. go. I've never fucked anyone the way I fuck you. You're mine, Willa, and I don't give a fuck who knows it. Is that what you need? You need me to bend you over right here and now and send you back out there with my cum dripping down your pretty little thighs to prove it to you? Yes. Um, no, kids party. Kids <laughs> party. Let me just remind you of that. Oh my god, slip and slide. <laughs> oh. No. Everyone's screaming. And the semen, this little semen, they're all screaming too. <laughs> anyway, Kate is fucking her like crazy and he's telling her that this is her home. He is her home. Luke is her home, which is disturbing Dermot the child into this. <laughs> Strong shot, in a way. <laughs> he is 100% for her and she is like ecstatic in this moment. Not only because of her climax, but also because of his words. We move on and Cade is working the cattle. I put that in little, because I didn't yeah. know what that meant. They're tagging and testing the cattle. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm not a country gal. I don't go out on the ranch on the, on Saturdays and go and play with the cattle. <laughs> Yeah, the ranch <laughs> dressing. <laughs> so Jasper is there and Violet is there with Sloane, their cousin. And we learn that she is totally goo goo gaga over Jasper, but she's engaged. Jasper is like, oh, I haven't met your fiance. And apparently they're good friends. So this is like odd information that he doesn't know. But Jasper and Sloane end up hugging and they do this thing where she presses her head to his chest and he rests his head on the top of her head and it's beautiful. And Cade watches this interaction. He's like, hmm, hello weird but next book let's go <laughs> I'm more here for it I fucking love a friends to lovers well actually it's not my favorite but this friends to lovers I fucking love yeah mm. crossover so Cade ends up breaking some of his fingers when he's like wrangling up the cattle he asks for Willa and she doesn't like fuss over him she just tells him that she wants dressed as a nurse for Halloween so <laughs> she can do it she can do the job you know she takes him to the hospital and Cade says were you worried and Willa's like of course Horse. I didn't know how well you'd be able to finger bang me with your left hand. <laughs> I love her so much. Turns out the doctor inside the hospital is Winter, Summer's sister. <gasps> Willa ends up chasing Winter into the hallway and she just wants to give Winter a big hug and Willa can see like how tired and sad she looks and in Willa's internal monologue we find out that Winter used to creep into Summer's room, not creep, not like creepily, when she was sick and just be there with her and it's like a secret that her and Willa have kept this entire time. Winter ends up telling Willa that she lost the baby and that everything in her her life is basically a mess and it's in this moment that willa realizes that she hasn't had a period right row and winter is like oh dear you think you're pregnant don't you they end up doing a pregnancy test and turns out that she is definitely growing a little kate eden inside of her yippee on the drive home kate is basically like are you all right and willa is in fact not okay <laughs> in this moment willa isn't <laughs> sure if he will be okay because of what talia did to him and she's worried that he'll think that she's done the same thing and she ends up just spilling the beans she like panics and says that she needs time to sort through her emotions because Cade thinks she's so young and when Willa tries to get his painkillers out of her purse she like just pulls out a carrot and Cade is just like what why is there a carrot and he's so confused just as we are but we just leave that right there because Cade's standing there like oh it's a carrot carrot? and she ends up being like there are more important things to worry about in this world than my fucking carrot in my purse and then she goes and stays at the main house that's just oh dear perfect absolutely it perfect. Is. it's like ross when he finds out rachel's pregnant and he like goes immediately to the condom like <laughs> company <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who have seen our heartless flat lay you can see the cameo that the carrot has made <laughs> so Kay doesn't need the night to think about this though he knows that she needs it though so he's willing to let her have it he ends up going to the main house because like willa and luke are there and they are his home so he's like why would i be anywhere else <gasps> Harvey and Cade have like a father and son chat and Cade spills the beans and Harvey asks Cade if he has a breeding kink and oh my we God. fucking die. Harvey <laughs> being like, did I not teach you about contraception? Like, what the fuck? Well, like... you had like 17 children yourself, Harvey, so yeah, good man, yeah. man, man. But Cade reacted like an idiot and only asked why she had a carrot in her purse but didn't actually react to the pregnancy information <laughs> itself, which is why <laughs> Willa's emotions are feeling all fucking frazzled right now. He ends up okay. sleeping 
sleeping on the floor in front of the spare room though and he wakes up and Willa is there and she's like what are you doing carrot boy (laughs) and they end up having a heart to heart moment and Willa says that she's not sad about being pregnant she just doesn't want him to feel like she trapped him and Kate is like I'm in love with you I don't care about anyone or anything except for you Luke and our baby and we fucking die Willa is going back to the city though and she wants Kate to take some time to think about everything she doesn't want him to just be the adult and marry her and love her because he has to because she's pregnant and Cade really respects her wishes but he only wants her but he also really appreciates the fact that she's putting him first and she's like this is fine for me but like you've been put in this situation and I don't want you to just have to be the adult you can say no if this isn't what you want and he's never had that I know so good (laughs) so Summer ends up going to visit Willa in the city and Cade has apparently been rage landscaping his (laughs) front yard which I sometimes do this when I'm in bad moods Willa says that she misses him and Luke so much that she can barely sleep and Summer gives her some absolute brilliant advice. We get this. From where I'm sitting it's two smart loving adults who are navigating a curveball in the best way they know how. It's two people who were both a little lost until they ended up on the same path and walked together for a while. It's two people who are happier in each other's company than they are alone. Better together than they are apart. Oh, oh that's beautiful. I that love that. So beautiful. Sweet. Everyone is based basically trying to see if Kate is okay and he fucking hates being pitied. Mm. He and Luke are near the well and he tells Luke about how his mum and him threw coins down there and made wishes. Luke and Cade both end up making wishes and Cade wishes for Willa a life with her and Luke tells him that he wished for Willa to come back. Oh my god. And Ugh. Kate almost loses his fucking mind at this. Yeah. Look, I would too. Willa drives back and she has like a positive blood test in her hands, ready to show the world that she is pregante. <laughs> when she arrives, Kate and Luke have been making a new concrete footpath and they're out the front. So Luke runs and hugs Willa and Kate tells her he feels good now that she's here with them. And it's very sweet. Luke shows her the new sidewalk and they have put like their initial initials in the cement. It's L-E and then it's C-E and then it's W-E. So hers are next to Cade's but with his last name instead of hers. I'm dying. Don't take me. Oh. I'm dead. And then we get this absolute fucking heartbreaker, okay, because Luke ends up leaving them to have a deep, meaningful conversation. But as he goes to walk inside, he turns around and he goes, See, Dad, I told you not to be sad. I told you she'd come back. Our wishes came true. She loves us too much to leave. Oh, my God, Luke. Get fucked. (laughs) You tiny, precious human. Tiny, precious little human with tears in my eyes. So Cade and Willa have a little cuddle. They're both super excited for the future. And Cade asks again about the carrot. He's like... Like, this is the yes. only thing in my life right now that does not make sense. I need to know. And Willa says that she doesn't even remember putting it in there. So she's like, I actually can't answer that question. It might have been from when I took Luke to go feed the It could have been that or it could have just been I needed a snack. I don't know. I seriously don't know. And Kay just has to live with this information because they end up saying I love you and then we die all over again. We do. They end up telling everyone about their baby and everyone is super fucking excited and Luke cries so does Cade and then we die all over again Cade has like a wrangling cattle event and Willa is a buckle bunny for him we love that Cade's living his dream and when they win Willa is literally screaming from the sidelines and he rides straight over to her and kisses her with massive PDA and she ends up stealing his hat and we get this moment you know the rule red you wear the hat you ride the cowboy yes Screaming, crying, throwing up. Yes, I am aware. Yeah. I have committed. The epilogue, basically Willa, is about due with their baby. Luke and Willa are making cookies and we get this fucking moment that literally made me like sob. Big feelings. Luke says, what is the baby going to call you? Willa says, well, babies don't talk, Luke. So I'd imagine (laughs) they will just babble a lot of random shit. (laughs) Luke says, I meant when they can talk. Will they call you mum? Willa says, I imagine so, yes. Luke. Do you think, do you think it would be okay if I called you mum too? No. Willa says, my dude, you can call me whatever you want. I know I'm not actually your mum, but I love you like one. Did you know that I fell in love with you before I fell in love with your dad? Luke says, 
You did, Willa. I did. Oh, my, oh God. my God. The literal pain. <laughs> the most beautiful love story that's ever existed. In the end, Willa is about to give birth. Kate is there. Everyone's in the waiting room. And we finally meet little Emma Eaton. And she is perfect. And we cry. And then Luke comes in with them. And then we cry all over again because big happy oh family. Oh, gosh. I love it so much. Now, the music reference for this book is Jizz in My Pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lonely Island, I think, is what yeah, they're called. Yeah, Lonely Island. On YouTube. Also, there's a playlist in the book so if you're intrigued yeah. go also just listen to anything by Carrie Underwood or Kelsey Ballerini that will do yeah, it yeah I was gonna say Kelsey mm-hmm. Ballerini oh it's so good and obviously there is no fan art so next week we're back with book three in Chestnut Springs with Jasper Cullen and Sloan hello in Powerless by Elsie Silver hockey player traumatic it- backstory <laughs> he's very tall and tattooed mm-hmm. he's tall tattooed and traumatized it's beautiful friends to lovers get on board we'll see you here next week same time same place bye thank you for listening to our podcast you can find us on instagram tiktok and youtube if you haven't already at a book and a bev podcast please rate like and subscribe we hear that helps we love and appreciate you and we'll see you next week